I want to start with you, Ian, if I may. Can you explain to us why should we all be going to Stockholm? What a good question indeed. Uh, you know, there's an awful lot of people live in the dark in the north of, uh, of uh, Sweden for quite a long time. But Stockholm is going to be full of light, uh, not least because we're looking at the latest developments in, in treatment, but also, of course, what we're looking at is the patient's role and the patient's part in all this, because it is, after all, a team effort. So come to Stockholm or stay in the dark. And what about the ethical dimension of this, the involvement of patients and their advocates? Well, for a long time, of course, patients weren't actually considered when, when doctors were considering um, treatments and so on. These things have all changed. And now, of course, we're taking things very personally, personally to the effect that we've got drugs which actually act for an individual person. It's picking up on that personal uh, aspect. There's a whole session called Getting Personal Treatment in the Age of Targeted Therapies. What does this all mean? We've heard about targeted therapies that... And that, that target one particular molecule within the patient, how is this making a difference as far as the patients are concerned? Well, this is what makes it so exciting, and this is why it's so important to come to Stockholm to hear about what's happening. You know, there is a myth out there that when you get cancer, you die. Particularly men think a bit like this, you know. In fact, the vast majority of people who have cancer survive. And an improvement on even that is now coming when we have personalised medicine. And whenever a doctor prescribes medicines, actually sometimes it can be a bit of guesswork whether or not it's going to work or not. Now with personalised medicine, we can virtually guarantee that this medicine is going to work because you actually do it in the knowledge of what the person's makeup is like. And, and that specifically means what in, in which sorts of diseases? Looking, looking for particular molecules, looking at the genetic, genetic makeup of, of the person, listening to their, to their past history, listening to their history in terms of, of, of their family history and so on. In other words, building up a profile around the person of which you can then determine whether or not a medicine would be best for them or maybe something else would be better. Now, there are examples of this, for instance, in breast cancer, aren't there, Ellen? Um, wh wh how would you illustrate this? For breast cancer, there is... There are many breast cancers. People think that breast cancer is just one disease, and that's not true, because every breast can cancer is different. So for breast cancer, it's, it's very important that you have a personalized treatment, that the doctor knows what kind of breast cancer you have, your history, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Jan, I've got to ask you about CML, because in lymphoma and leukemia, there are targets, aren't there? And it's made quite a big difference in your case, for instance. Yeah, I think it has really changed the way uh, leukemia or CML has been treated and has been encouraging the whole community in developing target therapies. Just 10, 15 years ago, nobody, nobody believed that the concept will work. And now the, the conference, like the one in Stockholm, they are full of that and everybody's excited about it. Mm. Now, patients need to get more involved. I think that's what I'm hearing from all, all of you here. But Ian, you're putting this to the test in Stockholm because you came up with this wonderful idea of having a, a trial, like a legal trial with the judge, yeah. um, somebody speaking for the defence, the, uh, the prosecution. Tell me about this. You're putting patient information on trial because it's not always understood that patients having lots of information is necessarily a good yeah. thing. Well, for starters, for instance, I'm sure most men don't realise that, that men can develop breast cancer. In fact, more men will die from breast cancer than will die from testicular cancer. So it's things like that people don't know about. And, and, and actually, early diagnosis, as with women, could save the life of a man with, with, with breast cancer. So we're going to put not a clinical trial out there. We're going to put a legal trial. We're going to prosecute health information for patients. And we're just going to see whether or not these things actually help or hinder. So we've got the top people to defend health information for patients. Give me an example of where you could go wrong. I mean, assuming that it's better to know about something, but yeah. where it might not be better to know. Well, it's, it's usually better to know about what's going on. What's, what the not knowing bit is, is, is dangerous, is not knowing what you can do about it. That's the dangerous bit. So knowing about what's out there, knowing about what the choices are, is much more an advantage than not knowing. And when you do know, I believe, uh, Jan, you think patients can be allies of the doctor in getting the treatment to work and get it, getting the right treatment. Sure, I mean, patients are key allies in uh, developing treatments because no trial will work without patients taking part. 
no ethics review will be fully ethical if patients are not being asked also about the details of the trial or in the design of trial and so on. So there are a lot of ethical reasons behind research where patients can really contribute with their complementary knowledge. And Jan, tell me a little bit about the magic of the Stockholm Congress, because you've got patients and doctors in the same sessions or patient advocates. You're mixing together the expertise of the doctors with all their years of specialist training with ordinary people who have a really good reason to want to know. Do you think that's going to work? Absolutely, and it's absolutely crucial, and I think this conference is leading the way there because quite, for quite a long time the communities have been quite separate. The patients were meeting in patient conferences and the doctors in scientific conferences, and this conference will be the place where these communities meet and discuss topics of relevance for, for both.